What's going on everybody? I hope you're all having a beautiful day and in today's video I'm gonna be telling you how much it will cost you to buy a house in 2021 and what your expectations should really be. I know many home buyers who are so excited to get into a new home to buy a new home and even investors but they miss the real details on how much it costs to own or buy a home. Now I'm not gonna go through the closing costs and all that stuff. I'm going on hard cost when you actually buy and what you can expect. So if you have any interest in buying a home or even investing in real estate, this video's for you. And as always, if you get any value, hit the free like button and let's get started. So guys, if you see me looking down, it's because I got my laptop hidden right here and I got a mortgage calculator open so we can take the numbers and actually put it inside that calculator and give you guys some accurate numbers. But to start off with, when you're buying a home that you want to live in or invest in, the numbers are everything. Basically right now what you're doing is you're like, hey, I make $5,000 a month, I wanna buy a house, I'm gonna pay its mortgage, its taxes, insurance, and I should be fine. You get that number and you just assume that that number is that number and it's not gonna change. You're not assuming a ton of other variables that I'm gonna explain to you right now, and most importantly, you're not realizing that Sometimes it just looks pretty on paper, but it's not really like that. I know people who are like, I'm renting right now, I'm tossing money in the trash, I wanna go buy a house, and I've literally spoke them out of buying a house because it costs them more to own a house than to rent. Can you imagine that? Not always does it make sense to buy a home. Not always is it saving you money, and not always is renting a bad way to go. But for some reason, everybody believes the American dream is to own houses and to own equity and to live in real estate that they own, and there's nothing wrong with that, and you want that, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the numbers, and sometimes the numbers aren't on your side. And sometimes renting just makes more sense. There's nothing wrong with that. So my goal with this video is very simple and quick. I'm not gonna take too much of your time. It's literally to tell you the numbers on what you can expect and then hopefully it gives you a clear picture before you get into it and if you're already into it well you're already into it but this is going to be some extra value to you because maybe i share something you don't even know you're about to get hit with so the first thing the biggest expense is your mortgage so right here i got a mortgage calculator i'm putting that you're trying to buy a home for four hundred thousand dollars and we're going to assume that you're putting ten percent down Okay, I'm gonna have Jesse who does my videos. He's gonna put, I guess, the text here. No, not on this side. I'm gonna have him put the text on this side. Well, either side, whichever side. That text is gonna share what I'm telling you. So, we're gonna buy a house for $400,000 and we're gonna put 10% down. That means we're gonna put $40,000 down, right? Make sure I'm doing my math right, everybody. So, now your loan is gonna be $360,000. That's what your loan's gonna be. So we wanna know how much your mortgage is before we even get into the rest of the details. In today's market, we're getting a 2.5 to 3.5 interest rate. We're gonna balance that and say a 3% interest rate just depending how good your credit is, how good your history is and so forth. We're gonna put a 3% interest rate and we're gonna put a 30 year term. You can do a 15 year. You can do a 10 year, we're putting a 30 year term. Your monthly mortgage, what it comes out to be for a $360,000 home at a 3% interest rate for 30 years is $1,517.77. Now this sounds and may look good, which it really does because $1,500 plus or minus, you can't even find a rental anymore. I'm living in Dallas, Fort Worth, 1,500 bucks won't get you anything. It'll get you a beat down house or it'll get you an apartment complex that's not in the best areas. Prices are going up, you guys know it's crazy. So 1,500 bucks plus or minus sounds real good and if you're buying a $400,000 home at least in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it's a very pretty home. Now these numbers in probably California or New York, you're laughing, but just switch up the numbers and make it relatable to you because your incomes over there are also higher. So now that we have a $1,517.77 mortgage, we're gonna keep that number just highlighted right here for you. We then wanna jump into property taxes. A house that's worth about $400,000 here in Texas, well at least Dallas-Fort Worth specifically, but we know Texas in general has hefty property taxes. We're looking at about a property tax rate of $11,000 plus or minus every single year. Is that even, like, I just want you guys to realize how expensive that is. Now, every single area is different from district to district is going to be different, but ultimately, you're looking at $10,000 to $12,000 a year in property taxes. So, we're talking about the mortgage, then we're talking about the property taxes every year. We're going to put that number at $11,000 
We're going to do $11,000 divided by 12. So that's $916.66. Okay? And we're going to keep these numbers so you guys can see that. Then you have property insurance. Property insurance on a home, that's $400,000. I think that you can get property insurance about $1,800 a year. You get good rates, you can find a good company, you can get it for about $1,800 a year. That's $150. So we got property taxes, property insurance, and then the mortgage. Now those are the known stuff that everybody just really runs their numbers on, but here are the unknown stuff that you have to also make sure you're aware of. Private mortgage insurance. Keep in mind, we put 10% down on this example, means anything under 20%, you have to pay PMI private mortgage insurance. That number varies. I've seen 100 bucks, I've seen 400 bucks, I've seen even more than that. That number can get crazy, but for this sake, we're gonna assume that the credit, the history, the the relevance to it is good, and we're gonna say that your private mortgage insurance every single month is $200, which is an added expense that many don't know until some even when they're in the contract to buy the home, the lender then brings that to them. Then you got HOA fees. I'm gonna speak specifically in an area that I just did a deal on. HOA fees for a $400,000 home, $600 a year, which means 600 divided by 12. If you guys are quicker than me, that's 50, I would say. I would think 600 divided by 12 is 50, so we're gonna tack on 50 bucks. Now, 50 bucks on 100 bucks, on 200 bucks, on 300 bucks, guys, that's swallowing the money that you thought you once had, all right? After HOA, we got property repairs, maintenance, and upkeep. This isn't cheap at all. Like when you're in an apartment complex or a rental, anything that goes wrong, you just pick up the phone to the landlord and tell them to fix. In my house, HVAC, it has some dust coming out. I gotta clean all the vents. I gotta get the system cleaned out. I gotta get it filtered. I gotta get filtration, all this stuff. I just paid $900 for that. You can get home warranty, which covers problems in your house, but that's six, $700 a year, plus $75 per person that comes out to the house to service the problem. And 99% of the time, they just, what do they call it? They just slap on tape to fix the problem and it eventually just breaks. And they just go cheap and they are horrible at least majority of them for the ones I've dealt with. So we're gonna say property repairs, maintenance and such for the year on a $400,000 house. You got HVAC, you got plumbing, you got electrical, you got issues, you got door problems, you got things around the door trim that you wanna fix, you wanna do caulking touch-ups, paint touch-ups, just things that you feel you wanna do in a home that you live in. I'm gonna say $2,000 a year, which is $166.66. That's another expense. We're putting it on a monthly basis. And the final one, utilities. Guys, you're in a 1,500 square foot home and you just bought a $400,000 home. That's a 2,500, 3,000, 3,500 square foot home now. You got higher costs on electricity, higher costs on water, higher costs if it has gas in there. You got higher costs all around and people don't take that into account. An apartment, when I was in an apartment, I was literally paying maybe a hundred bucks for water and electricity. In the home that I'm at now, I'm paying a couple hundred bucks a month just on utilities. So you're paying a hundred bucks to now a couple hundred bucks, sometimes five, six hundred a month. It's a big difference and many don't take that into account. So the number that we're gonna do, $400,000 home, let's assume it's a 2,500 to 3,000 square foot home, electricity, water, just utilities here and there that you're gonna be paying for. I'm gonna say it's about 300 every single month. Now you guys can tweak these numbers as you like, but these are numbers that I'm sharing based off of experience. So guys, I'm gonna tee up all these numbers right now and recap them with you, and we're gonna see what this cost comes out to be. So, we got 1517.77 is your mortgage. We got 916.66 is your property tax. We got 150, which is your property insurance a month. We got property, uh, we got private mortgage insurance, which is $200. Then we got $50, which is your HOA fees. Then we got 166.66, which is your property repairs. Then we got 300 for utilities. Your monthly cost on owning a home, and you make 5,000 a month is what we said in the beginning. Just, you might be making more but or less, but we're just saying it for this scenario, is $3,301.09. Now, I wrote these numbers in the calculator, but I had to recap them myself. So these numbers here hopefully add up with that number, but we're still in the same ballpark. $3,301.09. But guess what? People don't know that. People are like, my mortgage is $1,517.77. Life is good. 
they may tack on the property insurance and taxes. Many don't even do the property insurance because they're like, I'll just pay that one time at the closing and they forget that for the whole year, right? And then keep in mind this, every year property taxes, property insurance goes up, property maintenance goes up. As the home gets older, as logistics issues that we're seeing today happen where cost of items just go up, lifestyles get more expensive, HOA start to charge more. Guys, everything starts to go up every single year and then inflation just ramps that up with the market we're in today. So 3301 and nine cents is the cost right now, but next year, it's gonna be something new. Even another 50 bucks is hefty. 50 bucks, guys, you can take the family out to go eat. You can go have a good time and just take a walk in the park and grab some food there. You can do a lot with that extra 50 bucks, so why toss it in something that you didn't expect? So the point of this video, guys, was hopefully to get across to you that owning a home sounds pretty when you run low interest rates and the mortgage only, but when you get into the details, you gotta be responsible, ready, and understanding what you're getting into. I hope this simple but detailed breakdown really helped you out, and if it did, I'd value a like button. It's for free. I'd value that you subscribe because every week I upload on this channel, we talk real estate, business, and finance, and I enjoy this stuff. I do this stuff every day. I'm a real estate agent and an investor. I got investment properties that help tons of clients in real estate. This is all I've been doing since 18 years old. So that's what I know, that's what I share, and I try to give you guys as much value as I can. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like, and most importantly, thank you all so much for watching, and for right now, I'm out.